Welcome to AWS What's New. I'm Jeff Barr. I've got three cool launches to share with you today. First up, AWS Outposts lets you extend AWS into your data center, your colo, or your on-premises facility. It's delivered in both full rack and in rack mountable form, and each outpost can be ordered with a mix of EC2, EBS, and S3 capacity. Our customers use Outposts to support applications that need very low latency for local data processing. They also use them to meet data residency requirements for particular countries, states, and municipalities. You can launch EC2 instances, Docker containers via ECS, Kubernetes fleets via EKS, and EMR clusters, all on your outpost. You can also create RDS databases and Elasticash data stores. You already have the power to create EBS volumes and to create snapshots that are stored in the cloud. So what's new today? If your outpost is provisioned with S3 storage, you can now store your snapshots locally on your outpost. You can do this through the console, the CLI, or by writing code that makes a call to the AWS SDK. And this brings me to a really important point. Everything you already know about AWS applies to outposts. At the API level, you continue to call create snapshot. You simply supply the ARN and outpost and the snapshot is created there. To learn more about this, read Chani's blog post and the what's new. Next up, some new bare metal EC2 instance types for you. The M5N, M5DN, R5N, and R5DN instances are now available in bare metal form. You can use these instances to run applications that use specialized performance analysis tools, legacy workloads, and applications with licensing restrictions. You can also run virtualization secured containers, such as those from Clear Linux. The M5 instances are general purpose, and the R5 instances are for workloads that process large data sets in memory. The N, that means that the instances can use up to 100 gigabits per second of network bandwidth and the elastic fabric adapter for HPC workloads. The D means that the instances have 3.6 gigabytes of SSD storage. All these instances are powered by custom second generation Intel Xeon scalable Cascade Lake processors with a sustained all core turbo frequency of 3.1 gigahertz. You also have full access to EC2 features including Elastic Block Store, Elastic Load Balancer, and Virtual Private Cloud. To learn more, read that what's new. Finally, let's talk about Amazon TimeStream. This is a time series database that can process trillions of time series events per day. It's also both faster and more cost-effective than a relational database. Our customers use TimeStream for IoT, Edge, and application monitoring workloads. So I've got several new goodies for you today. First, you can now run join and union queries that cross multiple tables. Next, your queries can now examine data over time. You can use derivatives, integrals, and correlations. And third, you can now estimate your query costs and you get a better idea of the state of a long running query. To learn more about all these cool new features, read that what's new. And that's all for today. As always, we look forward to your feedback. You can send us an email, a tweet, or you can leave a comment below. If you've got a question about anything I've shared today, send it my way. I'll pick the best one each week. I'll share it in a what's new video. To see some more videos just like this, subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notifications. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.